One of the most helpful models to understand toxic dynamics is called the Karpman Drama Triangle. When we apply it to interactions with narcissists, it explains quite a few things that we don't normally see. But when we make one slight adjustment, it highlights the entire situation in a completely different way, which blows most people's minds. Once they see this, it can be one of the keys to completely change the dynamics they have with narcissists. But once we understand this, there's always the question, what do we do? Well, fortunately, there is the counter, the opposite, if you will, of the drama triangle, which is the empowerment dynamic. In this video, I will show you the Karpman drama triangle. I will show you what happens when you make one key adjustment and just how big a difference this makes. And then I will show you instead what the empowerment dynamic looks like and why that is something we can aspire to move towards. So if you're ready, let's jump in. As the name triangle implies, there are three different roles. Now, if we think of somebody in a relationship with a narcissist, we typically will be thinking of someone who is the victim. We will think of the narcissist as being the perpetrator. And quite often there'll be a third role that has to be filled, which is the role of the savior. The victim is the person who is at the receiving end of toxic behavior. It's the person who is being victimized, the person who typically feels powerless, might appear powerless, and quite often feels sorry for themselves, understandably. They're in a situation where they have given away power to another person. The person they give power to is what we refer to as being the perpetrator. It's the person who probably has some elements of sadism, who enjoys keeping the victim under their thumb, who enjoys the elements of control. And this person might be creating the problems, might be dominating the victim, blaming the victim and pressing the victim down. So there's already unhealthy dynamic between the two of them. But like I mentioned, there's a third role. This one is quite interesting. This third role is the role of the savior. The savior is the person to whom the victim turns for support, for encouragement, for sympathy, for empathy. This is the person who'll be saying, Oh, it's so bad what's happening to you. It's really unfair. It really is terrible. This other person is being terribly mean to you. It's quite awful. You get the idea, and I'm sure that you've known people like that, and probably you've been that person sometimes in some situations also. The reason why it's a triangle is that each of the three roles needs the others to function. Someone who's in a victim mindset needs a perpetrator. If they don't want a perpetrator, almost always they are free to go and leave this kind of dynamic. If they don't do it, usually it's because it feels safe, it's what they were used to, and quite often we see people leaving an unhealthy family who then get together with an unhealthy person, and they keep repeating this until they break out of the victim mindset. Then the perpetrator obviously needs a victim because they need someone to use as human punching ball. They need someone to abuse because if they're on their own and no one is playing victim, well, they can't be a perpetrator. But the weird role is the one of the savior. The savior wants to play the role of savior, wants to be the person saving someone who is in distress. Therefore, they need someone who is in distress and they need that person to stay in distress. If the victim escapes from this toxic dynamic, then who will the savior be able to save? They've got no one to save. So they're acting out as though they are saving the victim, but they need the victim to stay a victim. This, for example, was the case in one of the videos I did where I mentioned someone whose therapist convinced her to stay with a narcissist once she decided she was going to end the marriage. And the therapist panicked because she needed this person to stay with a narcissist so she could keep the client because it would be good for her cash flow. She did not want this woman to escape a toxic relationship and she convinced her to stay. And this highlights what happens when we change one element. This savior, is this person really a savior? This therapist who convinced this woman to stay with a narcissist and have two children with a narcissist, is she really a savior or is she not a perpetrator? She needs to keep the victim as a victim. Therefore, she is dominating the victim. 
She is blaming the victim for mistakes, and she's tearing down the victim so that the victim can't build up the momentum with which to escape a toxic dynamic. People who play saviors in the best of cases, or the least bad of cases, are enabling victims to stay victims. And in the worst of cases, they are proactively acting so that the victims cannot escape. I knew another so-called therapist in Paris who was doing exactly that, who was terrified at the idea of losing clients and always made sure that the people who went to see her would end up worse off because that was good for her cash flow. So on the one hand, we have the so-called savior who turns out to be a perpetrator. But what about the perpetrator? What about the narcissist? If they are not the perpetrator, who are they? Well, let's examine how narcissists describe themselves. They, and you'll probably notice this, they claim that people are unfair with them all the time. They claim that the world is unfair, the world owes them, or they've been taken advantage of all the time. They claim that they are victims. And they will often identify with this label of being a victim. And they'll tell you they've been victimized and people are victimizing them and other people are mean, they don't understand them. And they don't give them money and time and energy and attention. And all of these things, they claim to be victimized. Whenever someone is claiming, shouting out to be a victim, and I think it was in The Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky that that the father Karamazov, who was clearly toxic, there was something about how he paraded his victimhood with pride, something along those lines. There's nothing to be proud of to be a victim. It's something we try to get over of. You don't go around your neighborhood parading the fact that you were burgled as though it's something to be proud of. It's unpleasant. Get over it. Move on. Do everything you can to be better so you can move on. When people want to stay inside the role of victim, well, maybe just listen to them and believe them when they say that. Because sometimes, and quite often, they are using this in order to be able to be perpetrators in the shadows. So if we have the savior who actually is a perpetrator, if we have the perpetrator who actually is a victim, well, if you thought you were the victim, who are you really? The two other roles are taken. Maybe, just maybe, you're playing the role of savior. Maybe you're playing the role of savior, believing that maybe you can save the narcissist who's claiming to be a victim. Maybe you are believing what they say, that the world has been unfair, but maybe you can rebalance things. Maybe you can help them see things in a better way. Maybe you have the hope that you can undo whatever happened to them so that you can save them, save the relationship. Maybe that's what you're hoping. Maybe you're stuck in the role of savior without realizing it. But maybe it's difficult to wrap your head around the fact that It's possible you're simultaneously in a system where you are the victim and you're in a different system where you're playing the role of savior. Now, obviously, when you're in any kind of system, if it works for you, that's great. Enjoy it. Knock yourself out. Just remember, if you really want to break out of the victim situation, you don't need a savior. You need to break the dynamic and do things differently. You don't want people who give you sympathy and empathy and try to put you down and try to be condescending and belittling and coddling. That is what we do with infants, not what we do with adults. I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you're somewhere over the age of 18. Judging by the statistics, you're probably over the age of 40. So you are no longer in an infant state. If anyone is talking down to you like you are an infant, that is not healthy. These are not people who actually have your best interest at heart. These are people who are belittling you and coddling you and trying to keep you in the status of victim, probably because they can monetize it somehow. This might be the case with people selling you courses or trying to get views on YouTube. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that courses and views and videos are a bad thing. The main thing is, what is the main goal? Is the main goal to keep you in the victim status so that people can either milk you for energy or attention or your money or your clicks or your views, all of that? You know, that's one possibility. But the other possibility is to try to break this dynamic and help you break out of the drama triangle. 
And if you want to do that, that's where we can break out of the drama triangle and enter the empowerment triangle. Now, in the empowerment triangle, once again, we have three different roles. Instead of having a persecutor who pulls you down, we have a challenger who drives you up. This is someone who says, I know you can do it. I believe you can do it. It's possible to do it. They inspire you to grow. They inspire you to learn. They inspire you to be a better version of yourself. This is a rather big picture approach. It's more about the inspiration and the vision. So one of them is the challenger. The next one, instead of having a savior who comes there to save you as though you were an infant, you have someone who plays the role of coach. This is the person who supports you who assists you, who brings you clarity. This is the person who asks, how will you do it? What are the ways to do it? Or here are certain paths and let's see how you can figure out the different ways. This incidentally is what I am trying to do with all of my content and videos is provide you with clarity so that you can decide what is the best for you. So we can together help level up your talent stack so that you can do better. And of course, the third role, your role, if you are willing to take it, is the role of hero or the role of creator. It is the person who has a vision, who decides that in their life, it is them who has skin in the game. They want things to be better and they will make things better. Sure, there are people around who can support with vision, who can support with questions, who can support with a bit more clarity, but they are the ones who will take action because it's important in their life that they get things right. They are the main character in the film of their life. And it is so important to remember this and to realize it. These are the people who say, you tell me I can do it. I know I can do it and I will do it. Remember, all of this that we talk about is figure outable. We can figure it out. I've had my path and what I do is basically share the things that worked for me and I try to package them so you can learn from my experience and you can make the right decisions. There's one reason why I don't give advice because I don't know your situation, but you as a hero in your life, you can figure out solutions. And if you don't get entirely right, you can work through it. You can grow. Things will improve. And there are plenty of people here who will support you, who want things to be better for you so that you can break away from the drama triangle and get into the empowerment triangle. And as soon as possible, that you don't need people because you're doing absolutely fine on your own. This is like when you go and learn skiing. Sure, you have a skiing instructor to begin with, but the goal is that you can go and ski with your friends and have a good time without needing to have somebody behind you checking on you all the time. Break out of the drama triangle. Get into the empowerment triangle. Because at the end of the day, it's your life that's at stake. And your life is important. Time is going by. You probably have spent more than enough time in the drama triangle. Uh, it's not a way to live. It's so much more fulfilling to enter the empowerment triangle, to feel empowered, to make decisions, to be okay getting things wrong. It's part of becoming an adult. It's part of, part of living, basically.